Hi, everyone. Um, my name is uh, Abdullah, and I'm here to present um, our work on the Leader Worker Set API for distributed inference. Um, this is a joint work with uh, my colleague Grouping uh, and, um, and other uh, people in the community. So before I get started, like just show of hands how many people are familiar with LLM serving. Okay, that's good. And how many of you are familiar with um, distributed or multi-node, multi-host serving? Okay, that's good. And how many are familiar with disaggregated serving? Only three, okay. And how many of you have a flight at 7.45? <laughs> okay, <laughs> um, so most likely I'm gonna run out of here right after this talk. I'm sorry, very sorry, but I had to catch my flight. Um, but I'm really happy to discuss anything related to distributed inference and leader worker set uh, through our like, you know, community uh, channels. All right, so what is the problem that we're trying to solve here? Well, large language models are getting bigger and bigger. By definition, they are large, but they are getting larger and larger. So we start, like right now, average model size is 70B. Like if you ask people, they either use 7B Llama, for example, and now they are more frequently using 70B Llama models. Those models still fit in the GPU memory um, of one or two chips. Like if you think about an A100, for example, or H100 GPU, and A100, for example, have like 40 gigabyte of memory, right? So a 7B uh, uh, model uh, with, um, uh, you know, uh, full precision, for example, 16 bit, it, it can fit easily. However, now we're crossing that into a new territory. Even the open models, like we, all, we already know that, for example, GPT, uh, even Gemini, they are probably one trillion plus, right? So that's, like, that's not a secret. But even the open models that we have out there uh, are getting larger. And so the latest one is Llama 3405B that Meta released um, a, a few months back. Those models, they barely fit the GPU memory of a single machine. Most machines, the largest one, for example, on any cloud provider, you've got eight A100 or eight H100 GPUs. So if you do a math, like for 405B, you need 800 gigabyte, full precision. Uh, so so that, that would not fit the GPU machine, um, a, a single GPU machine. So instantly you need to have at least two. Um, even if you do, like, you know, quantization and uh, make it, like, you know, 400 gigabyte size. It would fit a single machine, but you wouldn't have enough space on the GPU memory to do a lot, large enough batches, right? Um, and so we expect that this 405E is just also the beginning. It's gonna continue to grow. Granted that GPUs will have more memory, will have bigger machines, but models will also grow larger and larger. Now, on the TPU side, we even have a, a more, like, you know, critical, the problem, like with TPUs, we scale horizontally. Like a single TPU device has like, you know, uh, 32 or even 16 gigabyte of, of memory. Um, and a single node actually has only four chips. And so at, at Google, we like, you know, quickly require multi-node, multi-host serving. So that's why we're trying to think about how to solve this problem. Um, and, and so, that's generally the, 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 the problem. The issue here is that we don't have an automated way of deploying such large language models um, on, on Kubernetes. Let me explain why. So a single model server is a single pod, right? So it fits a single machine. Even if you give it eight GPUs, on, on, like it, it's gonna work just fine. Like you could, you could like, you know, uh, use a deployment, you create a pod pair, per server, and that server could, you know, uh, um, occupy all eight GPUs. However, once you go multi-GPU, multi-node, multi you don't have the concept of a pod that runs containers across nodes, right? And so, now we have a, we need to have a new concept. Okay, how do I deploy a model server multiple pods? You can do it, right? You can use a stateful set, 
One, for example, in the case of a 405P on, on uh, an A3 machine, for example, on, on Google Cloud, um, you can create stateful of two pods, but then, okay, how do I scale up? Like, I want another one, a third one, a fourth one. Are you going to manually try to create new stateful set or high script it? You need to hook it up to HPA, right? Like, how, how is that going to work? And so that's why we propose this new API called Leader Worker Set. So the leader worker set API is as just uh, as, as I described. Uh, it's an API that basically tries to create a deployment of super pods. By a super pod, I mean a pod, a super like, a, like think of it like as a pod that runs processes across multiple nodes, but it acts as a unit. And so the idea here is that. I want to be able to create groups of pods as a unit, scale them up and down, behave exactly like a deployment, as much as possible as plug and play like a deployment. Like if you, if you are doing single host, you use deployment. If you want to use, multi, if you have a multi-host uh, workload, you just basically remove the deployment, plug in leader worker set, and everything should work just as fine. So how did we do this? Take a look uh, at the right side. So what we did was basically, as, as like, you know, all custom APIs are, we use the CRD. The way that we did it is we, create, we, we structured it as like two level. So we have built on top of stateful set API. We're not trying to reinvent the wheel. We're always trying to compose from components that work and prove to be working really well. So that stateful set that we created at the top, we call it the leader's stateful set, is the one that's going to manage the, the groups. Notice that in each group, it's not homogeneous. We have what we call like a dual template group. There's one pod with one template and then a group of pods, we call them, we call them the workers, that, are, that can be created from a different template. The leader pods are again created using the state, like the leader's stateful set at the top. So when you create an LWS, a stateful set, leader's stateful set is gonna be created. Stateful set API and controller kicks in, is going to create however many replicas you want. Now, the leader worker set controller, what it's going to do is, okay, for each leader pod that gets created, I'm going to create an, a stateful set, the worker stateful set, and assign the owner, assign that pod, the leader pod to it as an owner. And so the leader pod is going to, each, each pod in the leader stateful set is going to own a stateful set that represents the workers. Why did we use a stateful set? Again, we're composing, but also because we need stable indices. We need stable DNS host names as well. That is extremely necessary to enable distributed, um, uh, distributed um, uh, inference. Because if you think about it, like each group is basically a distributed job of some sort. So usually, like I probably most of you are familiar here, you use, if you want to use VLM, you're going to uh, instantiate Ray underneath it, and then you've got like, you know, the Ray head is going to run on the leader stateful set, and then the workers are going to run on the workers uh, um, stateful set. Uh, now, as I mentioned, uh, I want to go quickly about like the set of features that we implement, that we have here, but I, I will also later hand it over to Rupin to go into detail how we implemented them. Um, so we, we have also group startup policy. Again, um, the idea here is that we're only going to create the worker's stateful set only when the leader is ready. Because a lot of frameworks require that the leader is ready, basically it's running, the, because they are gonna connect to it back. And so that makes it easier um, for, for, these for these frameworks to uh, start up quickly. Um, we also support, as I mentioned, horizontal scaling. Um, again, as a, each group as a unit gets scaled up and down. Um, we have group restart, where basically we're restarting the super pod as a unit. Again, we always want to think about that group as a unit. We don't scale up and down the group itself. We scale up, up and down the number of groups. Um, we also have support for rolling updates. As we, like, we don't roll, do a rolling update within a group. We, we roll updates the group. So it's a group as a unit is going to be updated, and then we're doing it one by one. And Rooping is going to talk in detail how we do that and implement it. And finally, it's, we have placement policy. Again. Usually, with multi-host serving, what you need to do is you need to place the workers on, within the same network topology. With TPUs, it's usually a TPU slice where the uh, nodes are connected with an ICI link, uh, 
there's a special high, 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 high uh, communication uh, interconnect. With GPUs, you probably want to place them on the same rack, and then with the new GPU generations, it's probably going to be the same NV, NV link domain. Um, so we have that as well. Uh, with that, I'm going to hand it to Ruping to uh, talk in detail about um, horizontal scaling. Okay. Oh, sorry, it works. Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, Adam Paul, uh, first uh, join Kubka, so a little nervous. If I, yeah. So uh, today I will be cover mostly the implementation detail of the little work set. Uh, yeah, for the auto scaling part. So little work set actually exposes uh, scale some resources to allow HPA to adjust the number of replicas. And that way, uh, the way that replicas are scaled up and down is through managing the number of leader ports in a leader stateful set. Uh, below is an is a example of how we configure uh, the uh, HP, uh, uh, leader work set for uh, using HPA to auto scale. So uh, this is an end-to-end -end flow chart. And once we configure the metrics um, for HPA to auto scale, uh, for example, like the prefill, uh, log size uh, or of a model server, and then uh, once like we see this metrics by up, then HPA will trigger the sub resources of the LWS and set the L little works as replicas to scale up. And as we can see, previously only have one poor group here. Once uh, little works set um, replica number is adjusted, it will spin up a new leader port, and the new worker stuff set will be created as well, uh, which will share the same life cycle, and the new port group will come up and running. Uh, next part is failure handling. Uh, nowadays, most distributed inference workloads needs to be reinitiated when adding process or worker in a group fails. So this is a common property of this distributed ML frameworks, like a mode controller JAX or distributed PyTorch. And how we make it work on little work set is that when any port or container are restart in a single serving replica, and it will require the entire replica to be recreated or restarted. For example, here, as we can see in the port group one, we have a worker running here, and when any port or container restarted in this worker or like in any like the worker port here or leader port here, so little work set will detect those and restart the entire port group one, which uh, this port group will be re recreated. And then the, the initialization process will uh, run again for this uh, distributed inference workload. Next one is topology aware scheduling. So in distributed inference, we need to schedule the same group of ports on nodes uh, within the same network topology to minimize the cross node communication overhead. So one port group will be exclusively scheduled to one topology domain, for example, a node group, a node pool. So one port group is a single multi-host serving instance. And a topology domain here is a group of nodes that shares the same node label, which cat categorize them to be the same group. For example, a multi-host TPU slice can be a topology domain here, and also a slice of a GPU rank or any like a, a, a group of nodes that uh, have a very high throughput uh, network collected. Uh, in the picture below, as we can see, we have two port group here, and we have two node group as well, uh, which is a TPU multi-host slice, and those TPU hosts are collected by the ICI, which is very fast for data transferring, and each leader and worker port will be scheduled on one TPU host or TPU node, yeah, and those are belongs to the AWS replica, and those are belongs to the topology domain. This is how we implement the topology aware scheduling. So we use um, port affinity and port anti affinity, uh, with like a, a, a unique k and a unique value to ensure like the uh, ports in the same group will only be scheduled on the same topology domain. Next one is rolling update uh, support. So little work set support rolling update 
uh, strategy with max unavailable and max search setting. So max unavailable here means like, a, let's say we, we have five uh, replicas. So we on, only ensures uh, at most uh, max number, a uh, max unavailable number of replicas is not available right now. And with max search supports that when we are um, running the rolling update, we will always have max search number of replicas uh, uh, like being brought up before we proceeding with the rolling upgrade. And each replica is a unit for updating. The triggering of the up upgrade is a template hash that be generated uh, through the leader work template and some API fields that we believe is important uh, uh, that we need to have the, all, all the replica to be up upgraded. So this hash will be uh, stored as a label on the leader's level says port template. And when this uh, hash value changed, it will like trigger the leader's level set to ha start the rolling update. And the upgrade process um, side, like the leader work set actually relies on the leader's level set to manage the process of the upgrade. The upgrade will stop when the upgrade replica uh, already upgrade replica on Hillsy. For example, let's say we have five replicas and we already upgraded the two replica, but like the first replica is on Hillsy right now. At this time, we will stop the uh, upgrade and um, like uh, uh, stop there. And like the process of the, this is managed by the leader stateless partition. So whenever we are upgrading, right? And uh, we reach, uh, let's say we reach a third replica and we will use partition to manage it like a, uh, the progress of the uh, upgrade. Only if we change the leader status partition number, then the upgrade will proceed. And for the uh, upgrading of a single replica, the mechanism here is like we will restart the, this uh, upgrading replica and through like recreate the leader port and the, uh, because of worker status it is uh, have a same life cycle uh, with the leader port. So when we deleted the leader port, the worker status will state of state will also be deleted uh, at the same time. So uh, when we are upgrading this single replica, like we are always doing this through recreating the entire port group. On the right side is a picture of how this upgrade process happened. Uh, we always upgrade the uh, replicas from the largest index to the smalling, smallest index. So for example, here we upgrade port group three and then port group two, all the way to port group zero. This is a larger picture of how the upgrade works. I will skip this uh, for now. Yeah, uh, next we will uh, show several uh, examples of how we run in multi-node inference on GPU and TPU. This is a setup for uh, running multi-node inference on GPU. Uh, as, as we can see from right side, uh, we, have two, we have two A3 nodes with eight, H100 GPU chips using compact placement. And the, the good side of compact placement is that we will co-locating these GPU nodes to minimize the cross-node communication latency, especially this decision transfer. And the ML runtime we use here is like, we use the VOM plus three, and we are running NAMA 345B model with tensor parallelism equals to eight, which is, uh, as we can see here, number of GPUs per node, because we use, remember, two A3 nodes, with eight H100 GPU chips. So the tensor power is here, we use eight. And this will ensure the all gather happen, which requires a lot, much larger uh, data transfer uh, throughput, will only happen within one GPU node. And we use a pipeline pattern as two, which means like we split the model layers between two uh, GPU nodes. And we, in each model for the pass, we only ensure like the latency uh, penalty um, to this cross node communication is very minimum when we are doing the uh, yeah, inference request. And ideally, this GPU node should have RDMA enabled, uh, which is like a accelerated uh, uh, me direct memory access. Next one is the example uh, for TPU multi host uh, inference. The right side is how we set it, uh, set it up. So we will be using two TPU slides of V5 E16, which will have four TPU hosts. Uh, each TPU host will have 
uh, four TPU chips as well. Uh, we will have five ports per replica running on four nodes. One, re one, uh, whole, one node will be running one leader port and as well as like one worker port. As on the worker port, we will run in the Pathway worker, and one leader port, we will run in the model server, which is Jack's program, and some like a proxy Proxy root manager, which is like the ML stack. Uh, so the model, ser uh, model server we will be using is, is the JStream GPU inference server. Um, Pathway is a distributed compute uh, runtime here, and we will still be running the Llama 3 4 5 b model with only a tensor parallelism because uh, all TPUs are, co are collected with ICI. Uh, it's a two-dimension topology. So it, it is very good at uh, uh, transferring data. Uh, so using tensor parallelism here is like uh, already good enough. And cross-host communication only will happen through inter-chip interconnect. Next, we will discuss about another major uh, distributed inference uh, worker type, which is called disaggregate serving. So uh, the process of uh, LLM inference can be split into two phases, which is prefill and decode. Prefill is much compute bound, and decode phase is much more memory bound. And the two phases will interfere with each other running on one server, because they will compute for resources and uh, and like when we are running the decode loop, whenever there is a compute re uh, new inference request comes in, the decode loop will be interrupted and to do the prefilling of the request. So all this kind of thing will cause a resource efficiency and unpredictable latency as well. So to address this problem, uh, we uh, could run this act serving, which will split the prefill and decode stages uh, to run on uh, separate servers. This will bring the following benefits. So the first one is reduce the prefill decode interference. So prefills usually work at batch size one and decode phase running with a much larger batch size. So you know the prefill stage, uh, when we are doing prefilling with a new incoming request, we will always interrupt in the decode loop. And this will, uh, no matter, make the HBM to be occupied for a amount of time and as well as like a, a stop the decode loop for some time. And decode loop will not use all the computer resources in the TPU chips as well, so which will keep the uh, computer resources to be idle for some time. So the ideal solution uh, here is like to split these two phases and which to optimize both memory usage and uh, computer usage. The net, uh, next benefit is like a, it can also reduce the time to first token latency uh, under a high throughput latency situation. Uh, and first token latency is very important because it is a customer perceived latency. Uh, it is the first token, it's a time like when customer first time seeing the re return token, right? So um, optimizing that will have customer to make customer to have a better user experience as well. And a third part is, is enable heterogeneous VM types for prefer and decode that matches better the computer characteristic of each phase. So remember, prefill and decode have different um, bound, right? Uh, so for prefill, we can use a, power, a computer powerful machine. For decode, we use a memory powerful machine. And the good side for that is like a, uh, this machine can sometimes have different prices, right? Enable heterogeneous VM types could ask, uh, could have like uh, cloud providers to use different VM types to with even lower cost to have this combination of uh, infrastructure to do a uh, inference request uh, to work run inference workload and with like extra benefits as well. Uh, the last one is uh, better overall resource efficiency and lower cost because uh, it, actually uh, we have like some benchmarking and also experiment uh, running like we can see actually two point two times uh, cost reduction uh, with heterogeneous and disk serving uh, with like pretty similar uh, latency SL. Uh, which uh, we run like a no matter H100 uh, uh, combining with TPU V5E. Uh, TPU V5E we use that for decode and um, H100 we use that for preview and we have seen actually pretty good overall cost reduction as well. So um, for running this serving here, we use little work set to help orchestrate um, this kind of serving paradigm. Um, this is a picture of how exactly we set up the um, disk serving with data work set. 
uh, this is a, a more detailed uh, one replica of the uh, uh, serving workload. So here we have two preview TPU slides, and we have one decode TPU slice, and which uh, which like when the um, inference request comes in to the this self orchestrator, it will get prefilled. Once it is finished prefilled, we will transfer the data uh, KVK uh, uh, to the uh, decode uh, TPU size here. And this all happens, uh, and the orchestration of those, as assignment of those TPU slices um, for prefilled and decode uh, is done by the uh, model server or the disk orchestrator, and all the computation, task dispatching, and all the like uh, uh, JAX API call is handled by the IFRT proxy and also the pathway worker here. And this is a second replica of the data serving. Uh, so all the service will only communicate with the leader ports, a model server uh, container here. Okay, so last one, we will go to a quick demo of like a how to use leader works to run multi host inference uh, on TPU. Right now, let's do a quick demo. This is a Kubernetes manifest for deploying the Jetstream pathways serving instances. In this file, we have specified the number of replicas as one and enabled exclusive placement. This ensures one GK node pool will be one replica. We configure the restart policy to recreate a group on port restart. It ensures gun restart for individual port or container failure. This deployment targets TPU v5e port slice with four hosts. In this single replica, there will be five ports being created. One leader port and four worker port. Each worker port will consume four TPU chips. Let's deploy this manifest into our Kubernetes cluster. We can see all five ports are created now. The first one is a leader port. Others are the worker ports. Let's send a sample request to the JStream server. This is a response we get. With leader worker set, we also support auto scaling, failure handling, and rolling update. Right now, I will show the auto scaling part. This is using Kubernetes horizontal port auto scaler component. In the HPA manifest, we have set up the minimum number of replicas as two, maximum number of replicas as five, and the target metric as JStream prefill backlog size. This is a custom metric we have added to the JStream orchestrator. It shows the current node of the model server. We set the average value as 10, which means for the past 50 seconds, if the average number of requests in the JSTREAM prefill backlog is 10, we should scale up the number of replicas. In the target reference section, we have configured it to the leader worker set object, named JSTREAM pathways. Now let's deploy this HPA manifest. As we can see, the original number of serving replica is 1. After several seconds, the scale up was triggered by the HPA component to increase the number of replicas to 2. If much more requests are sent to the JSTREAM servers, which can't be handled by the existing replicas timely, the scale up will be triggered again automatically. Next, let's try out the failure recovery support. When any hardware or workload failure happens, to recover the serving replica, all ports in the same group should be restarted by the controller. Here, I will delete one of the worker ports to simulate the failure scenario in this replica. As we can see, after leader worker set, detected one port in this group has been restarted. It will automatically restart the entire group of ports.
Yeah, I think that's a demo here. Yeah, I think pretty much it. Yeah, thanks. I have a few minutes for questions, but then I have to run. <laughs> Go ahead. For prefill and decode. So the TPU slices are actually connected via DCN. So you have two TPU slices. One is running decode. The other one is running prefill. If they are not on the same TPU pod, right, they are going to be on two different pods. The communication between them is going to be through DCN, data center network. So the KV cache transfer is going to go through DCN. So if you gave an unread running the decoder, this one just goes through the DCN. Yeah. So the first one is doing a, a prefill and then generates the KV cache. It will transfer it to the other one, which does the decode. So it, it, yeah, think of it as a pipeline parallelism, basically. Yeah. Yes. How does this intersect with DRA? It doesn't, or it does to a degree. DRA is single node focused. This is multi-node. Did, did you see, Kevin did a lightning talk today about the new VG 250s? The, no, uh, NVIDIA. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the NVIDIA, new NVIDIA hardware, you mean? Yeah. yeah that's that's going to work on it really well. <laughs> I enjoyed that. Yeah. How does the topology spectrum change, like, flow and level Is it applied to the work spectrum? So, um, it's not at that level. Like, the, the, top, like, the, you think about it as exclusive replacement. Like you want to co-locate them on the same topology. Zone is way too big, right? Like you, you for the I understand for the four parts right, in a set. But if I want three replicas. Oh, right. Just like you're doing with deployment. Think about it as a super pod. Those are going to act together as a unit, right? Uh, because they have the same template. So when we inject any node affinity, et cetera, it's, they're going to go together, right? With the exclusive placement, the leader is actually the way that we implement exclusive placement is actually interesting. So, we first schedule the leader pod, and then we know where it's being scheduled. And then for the workers, we're going to inject a node affinity to the topology where the leader landed, right? So we we ensure that the workers are following the leader. It's configurable. It's already configurable. But like 99.9% .9 of the frameworks, they're not intelligent enough to handle like individual worker failures. They have to get re already restarted to start from the same uh, um, state, okay, basically. But, but the CRD basically allows. It, yeah, it does. Basically, you could you could get this normal stateful set behavior, with one caveat: if the leader is is dead, the worker is going to be dead. Why? Because the leader is the owner of the of the so so they are connected. Sort of related to that, we're confused. Where are we with game scheduling? Are we thinking of having that as a feature so that people avoid dead lock? So we're thinking about that as a like a scheduler feature. You see, like here we are claiming exclusive placement, but we're not actually doing the scheduling. We are injecting scheduling constraints to inform the schedule what we want to do. Um, beyond that. It's going to have to be like, you know, uh, a gang scheduler. Um, we do have that in queue, or we will have it in queue. Um, ideally, we will have something in, like, you know, in cube scheduler, like, you know, as a plugin. Correct. So we're, the group is. Uh, immutable, think of it. Like it's it's a unit. When you when you um, created the leader worker set, right? You said I have four workers. You can't change that. Right? Those do, do not scale. So each super pod is fixed to four. And then I'm going to auto scale the number of these super pods. Yeah. 
Right. right. And so I can have to do it at another... Uh, yeah, but it's not an inference server. That, like, the group, the whole group is a single inference server that is running on a distributed yeah. set of nodes. So this is fixed, right? Because it depends on your model size. So you say 405B requires two, um, you know, nodes. That's it. Like, you, you, like that's what's going to happen. Now, if you want on a horizontal scale, you're going to create another group of two nodes, another group of two nodes, right? So that's how, and that's supported. That's how we do it. No, no, no. We're not increasing the number of workers. We're increasing the number of groups. Yeah, exactly. 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 It's those are like one unit, right? Yeah. No problem. Uh, the leader worker said is, uh, I mean, you have one, is it one service per model, right? Uh, because that, that was my question. I mean, I'm just uh, doing it like in a third. If you see the number of uh, workers per model, then uh, basically if you have much bigger models, you have to, like, even if you're scheduling smaller models, you don't need this. Yeah, it's fixed. So basically, you, you you want to know like what is your model size and say, okay, this is it's the same thing as when you decide how many GPUs you need, right? Uh, just want to go here. Any other questions? It's pretty much the same. So you want to think of it, again, as a super pod with the leader pod being your facade, right? So it's your representative of the service. So when you configure your service, you're going to set up um, a selector, right? So that selector is going to only select the leaders. And the leader is going to receive the request, fanner, the, the, like starts the distributed job, basically, like the distributed inference uh, processing. It will collect the result and then will return it. Yeah, you want to present this as a single unit all, all the time. Like with your service mesh setup, you want to forget about the workers and just think about the leaders, right? So the workers are basically the workers for that uh, for that leader. Yeah. So we have a pod template, right, for the. Um, for the workers separate from the leader. So it depends on how you set it up. So you can, it's, it's yeah, you, you should be able to. Yeah, exactly. It depends on the storage, like, you know, itself characteristics. If it can be shared between the, yeah. And yeah, but we don't, actually, we don't expose the stateful set uh, characteristic um, knobs. With stateful set, I think you can also create, you know, create, like you have a, uh, actually you can, if you, Oh no! You don't. You, the problem is that with the leader worker set template, you don't have the stateful set template to create a PVC template. Yeah, but we, we we can expose that. We can we can try to yeah if if it is needed. But I I don't think it is. In this case. So leader worker set is going to do the orchestration, right? It's going to set things up. It's up to the disaggregated serving implementation. Um, so with like what grouping uh, described, the jet stream, which is like the new open source model server we have on TPUs, um, it's going to have like a, a, an orchestrator that will know, like it will assign, okay, this slice is decode, this slice is prefill. And you have to configure it like with some parameters, right? Right, but n not like it's not going to be within a single. So that, that that's that's a very good question. So the way that we envision this working, you have to set up two LWS, right? And then because the the um, each replica has an index, you can all and you can match them. Exactly. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow. So because I can. We want to simplify the like the for the simple case like the more traditional case. 
if we go into that level, like heterogeneous workers, the complexity is going to be 10x. Yeah, super complex. Exactly. Yeah, but with this, I think with two, that, that's, that's a very good question. We, and we thought about it from the beginning. For heterogeneous setup, like the way that, we, again, we, we're, we're following some sort of like a, a model where we're composing, right? So we compose this LWS from stateful set, and the idea is like we're going to compose this aggregated serving orchestration from two LWSs. We're just happy, like you know, this is, has, has nothing to do with LWS itself. It's depends on it depends on the provider. The way I would inject like the, the special devices for LWS, the same way we send it to a pod. You have the full pod template, so whatever you you're able to do with the stateful set, you should be able to do here. Yeah. Can someone order an Uber for me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good. It, it is again the same. It depends on the framework, um, like Ray, for example. You're going to have Ray head running on the leader and Ray workers running on the on the workers, right? So if the Ray head is the one that is emitting the metrics, you're going to have to set up like you know. No, but when health is reported, does it report? Uh, oh, health. Yeah. Right. So you get, again, it's it, it like it depends on your framework. Uh, in our case, for example, Jetstream server itself is running on the leader. It's the one that's going to be responsible for declaring that the super pod is healthy or not, right? So you, you're gonna do health checking on the, on, the, on, the, on the leader. At least that's the pattern that we have in mind and we've been using, right? Thank you so much.